Richard, you are, amongst many other things, a State Department insider. If the, uh, the uh, announcement that the President made last night will come true, increase of the, de of the defense budget without increasing taxes, that means cutting other budgets, and the uh, State Department seems to be a target for budget cuts. Uh, I heard uh, figures like 30%. Uh, Senator Graham uh, commented this by saying that on arrival, but there will be cuts. What, 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 what will the State Department look like and what will the President's inbox look like, which uh, uh, tends to fill up with international things, if really the State Department budget will be cut in a significant way? Just to give people a sense of the numbers, the president's talking about increasing American defense spending from roughly 550 to 600 billion, roughly a 9-10% increase. That amount in real terms, roughly 50 billion, is more than, essentially it's equal to or slightly more than the entire State Department budget, if you add up diplomacy and, and foreign aid, just to give you a sense of magnitude. Uh, the president's budget, I think, is a uh, unfortunate, not because of the increase in defense. I'm actually prepared to argue that on behalf of a defense increase, if you add up what the United States has to face in the world, you know, possibility of renewed Russian aggression in Europe, old-fashioned, and, and the remilitarization of NATO has to be a priority, have to deal with North Korea, have to deal with a more assertive China in the South China Sea and elsewhere all the continuing issues in the Middle East and Africa, the, which is essentially an open-ended counter-terrorist effort, which is going to go on for a generation. There's no, this, I, words like extinguishing and exterminating ought to be banned from the lexicon. It's not going to happen. This is ongoing. This is now, this is baked into the cake. Uh, you got cyber, you got, you know, New domains, the Arctic, we're just issuing a report in a couple of weeks, uh, you know, the need for everything from icebreakers to other stuff, you know, for that new physical uh, domain, you got all the personnel issues. Now, could you take care of a lot of this if money could be spent more wisely? Yes. But that's not going to happen, given the politics of defense spending and the rest. So that, the fact that a, a significant degree of waste and inefficiency is, is institutionalized because of the way of Congress and others mandate that money is spent. I think there's a pretty good case for increasing the defense budget. What there is zero case for is increasing it at the expense of things like the State Department budget. That's part of national security. So, okay, we could spend more in defense and we could obliterate ISIS in Mosul and we could gradually force ISIS to give up its position in Raqqa. Then what? What happens the day after? Who do you hand it off to? And how do you persuade young people not to become recruits for ISIS the day after that? So that's where the State Department comes in, and a lot of other, and that's where assistance and development, diplomacy, all these things count. So the idea of choosing one dimension of national security demand, defense and ignoring other aspects of national security makes no sense. Also, the other part of the budget, uh, if you look at the U.S. budget, it's uh, See if I got my numbers right. Yeah, it's about four trillion dollar budget. So 15% is roughly defense. 15% is discretionary uh, domestic. And then where is where does everything else? So what would be cut? Well, discretionary domestic would be cut under the president's budget. Well, that's kind of like investment. That's our seed corn. That's investment in this this because everything else. What's everything else? Everything else is stuff like uh, social security and Medicare and Medicaid and disability, it's, it's entitlement programs. And then you've got you know, wonderful uses of money like interest on the debt, uh, which is only going to go up because rates are going up and the amount of debt are going up. So what you, the only place you can really, you know, Willie Sutton used to rob banks for the good reason, that's where the money is. If you wanted to cut the, the budget and not have the deficit and the debt go through the roof, the place you've got to do it is entitlements. <clears throat> Because interest on the debt you can't do anything about and is going up because the rates are going to go up. Defense, we have real costs. Discretionary domestic is investment in your future. The only place you can make intelligent cuts. And if, and if that's off limits because of political guarantee, then the only thing, then, then debt is going to balloon. And when debt balloons, one is it gets more expensive because there's more debt to finance, even if rates didn't go up, and, but they will. So it's a vicious cycle, not a virtuous cycle. 
and then it makes us much more vulnerable <clears throat> to the machinations of markets. And people at some point are going to say, gee, we're only going to continue to finance greater amounts of American debt if rates go up. Well, you never want to put the Federal Reserve in the position where they've got to raise rates, not to cool an overheated economy, but to attract financing. Because then you overcool an economy, and again, it's a, it's a vicious circle, not a virtuous circle. We're, we're moving in that direction. So this would, to me, and this is a big part of our national security. So it's a mistake to equate national security with what you spend on defense. It is a dimension of it. It is not the totality of it. So I think this makes no sense. Mm -hmm.